as a Christ follower, you get to put on a new identity. For us, it's that four-dimensional businessman. We're helping these men step into that where they're going, okay, I'm not only going to submit my health, something I can't outsource. As a man, I can't outsource my health, meaning I can get a plan, but no one's going to make sure that I don't eat Reese's cups and stuff them in the side of my bed in the middle of the night. And then when I go to change the sheets, all the wrappers fly up in the air. And I'm speaking from complete experience on this one. No one can keep me from doing that. So if I can't outsource that area, I probably should take responsibility and get good at it. I shared at Wellspring a quote, with great power comes great responsibility. No, when you take great responsibility, you get you gain great power. If you want to decrease stress and anxiety in your life, the number one first step is to take responsibility for the thing that's causing you the anxiety. Hmm. If it's the business, take responsibility for it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Kingdom REI Real Estate Investor Podcast. I'm your host, Ellis Hammond. And on the show today, I got a great friend, a guy that I can't wait to introduce you guys to, Nicholas, Nick, Nicholas Bailey. What's up, my brother? Dude, grateful to be here. First off, I want to honor you. Thank you for creating a platform that can reach other people. At one point, I was 60 pounds heavier, which if you're watching a video version, I ain't 60 pounds heavier anymore. Pretty fit right now. <laughs> And and it, I couldn't go to a podcast or a YouTube channel or a Facebook ad to change my situation. It wasn't, it didn't exist at the time. And, and it was, it wasn't until one person shared a story with me that changed my life forever. Lost 60 pounds in six months and just everything changed. And so thank you for creating an opportunity where we can have those life transforming moments. I call them defining moments. There's inconsequential moments in our life, which is like what you ate for breakfast. It ain't going to change your life, whether you ate something else or something, something, something different. Yet, maybe there's those times like, where did you meet your wife? If you didn't go to that place and meet her, everything would be different. So we had these defining moments, and that's what we're here to create today. It's not inconsequential, or it doesn't matter, but defining moments that shift your life forever. And if it wasn't for that kid lose, helping me lose 60 pounds, I wouldn't even be on the show. So let's create yeah. defining moments, and thank you for creating the space. Yeah, dude, I love it. Let me just let me just pray that for us today, man, before we get in. God, I, I affirm that. I lift that up. I pray, Holy Spirit, you would come and that you would submit that that affirmation, that declaration uh, over our listeners, that there would be a defining moment, God, that would draw them closer to you, that would set them a, a more, that their feet more steady on the path in which you would have them, God, and lead them into, uh, into good works, lead them into greater faith, God, lead them into greater blessing. I pray that over myself. I pray that over Nick today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dude, so before we got on the show, so guys, you get you're gonna get to hear from an amazing entrepreneur today. I'm really excited for you to meet him. And the, we were talking about the the way you've changed your business from before it was called the Billion Dollar Brotherhood. Today it's called the King's Brotherhood. And like walk me through that transition of why that name change has been really important. I just kind of want to get the backstory and then even what is the King's Brotherhood? <laughs> yeah, let me, let me take you a little bit further back where I didn't grow up as Christian at all. So this whole concept of of where people are offended by the church or this religious thing or or they're like, this is what God does and this is what God doesn't do is very foreign to me. I actually had this really crazy experience around 17 years old after I lost weight. So I lost my 60 pounds. I'm feeling good. I try to do what all these other kids are doing, go to clubs or like not clubs. At but 16? Like, you know, At 16? You know, kids are going like, to clubs, bro? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let, we'll call the clubs like your friend's house where your parents are gone and everyone's <laughs> partying and music's going on. And, and I'm just like, man, there's got to be something bigger than this. So I almost got very lucky. Think about this. Very lucky to experience having a breakthrough and realizing that on the other side wasn't the fulfillment that I expected. And I got very, very lucky and blessed and aware that no matter what I did from there, it was kind of going to feel the same, which can be a really lame place to live. I was like, what? There has to be something bigger. Yet I looked at Christians, Catholics, Mormons, Buddhists, whatever, and there was no power. So I was like, ah. Like, where is the thing where we get power? I looked at Christians and I thought they just don't drink. Mm. So like, that's not very powerful. Like, congrats, you just don't go out and drink. Like that that's what the kids did at my school. I was so foreign to religions or God or anything that even when I was in second grade, someone asked me, are you Catholic or Christian? As if that's like the only two things you can be. And I was like, which ones like drink a ton of alcohol? And they were like <laughs> Catholics. And I was like, oh, we're definitely Catholic then. So I, I just told people, yeah, I'm Catholic. Like we drink a lot. And said, so I was so foreign to this whole concept. 
So I actually got into this place where uh, <laughs> I, I was. I can't I was wait to hear what my for... Catholic audience thinks about that. That's good, <laughs> yeah, yeah. man. That's good. I gave them a good re reputation, right? Yeah. So I, I remember getting this point where I was like, man, there has to be something bigger out there. So I really got into demonic stuff. I didn't know at the time, but I was calling in bad spirits and and having tons of supernatural, crazy experiences that left me gripped in anxiety, in fear. So just because you see a supernatural experience where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, but wh where there's there's a lack of the spirit of the Lord, then it's obviously the opposite. And it's very interesting that it was like this. And we go as deep into this as you want, because this was literally me for, sometimes I'd be up all weekend. We'd be doing all different types of demonic parties and having 40 people at my house. Cause I was just like, this is real. The supernatural is real. And really what was interesting is that we talk about that the opposite of, of, Fear and faith are very similar in definition, but the spirit of them is completely different, right? Expecting something that you can't see will happen. So it's interesting how that God is only pleased by faith. And, and the prayer and faith is what moves God, right? Moves his heart, moves the spiritual realm, et cetera. Yet also on the fear side, if you look at the demonic side, there's also the sense of obedience. So faith and obedience, faith without works is dead. And on the demonic side, we realized that obedience in the face of fear, gripping fear is what gave these demonic presences more of a foothold. So they would tell us to do things and we'd be so afraid and we'd do them and be obedient and the oppression would continue to rise and the, the presence would become more and more thick. And so it really got to the point where I was gripped by anxiety and fear. I'm talking like I had a night one night that a demonic spirit told me that if I told anyone what it told me, that Lucifer himself, which is a very big distinction, Satan is not the name of, of the devil. Satan is just like a name for devils in general, right? Lucifer was the name of the fallen angel that we would call Satan. So I didn't know this. So think about like, I've never been to church. So I'm like, Lucifer himself, I'm like, oh, I know who that is. We'll kill your friends, your family, and then you. And I was so gripped, man. I ended up going to a, a Bible study on accident. Three kids reading about Jesus and miracles. And they apologized to me. They said, man, I'm so sorry. This is scaring you. Cause I was unbeliever. And I was like, I talked to demons. I'm not afraid of this. And they were like, Oh my goodness, this is, we never seen this before. They were just starting to get into the power and authority of God, which are two separate things. Jesus gave the disciples authority. That's why they cast out demons in Jesus name. Yet when he left and gave them the Holy spirit, they also got power. Just something really, really fun. And I, I, they never experienced that man. So I went to them and, and, they said, if you come back next week, we'll give you a Bible. And I came back and, and they ended up giving me a Bible. They said, do you, want, do you want Jesus to be Lord of your life? I was like, bro, why did you tell me this like last week? Like, why did you wait so long? But they weren't used to someone being so hungry. I was already seeking. I was seeing what hate and grip and fear and, and supernatural could do. And I was like, I want to go into this world. Like, I want to give my whole life to Jesus. And so that's how my start happened. I ended up going to ministry school, Bethel School Ministry. I, I put point up because it's Northern California. I'm originally from Southern California. I'm now in Austin, Texas with my family. Went to 14 different countries, saw amazing things happen, just pre, pre, just just literally getting to know God. Just like how crazy is it? it takes so much to get to know a person. We We don't even know like what planets and different like uh, ecosystems are out there in the, in the, in astronomy and, and we can't even see the galaxies. And that was just from the expansion of our creator speaking the galaxy into existence. How much more crazy is it to get to know the actual creator of the thing that we can't even understand? <laughs> like we can't even, we, you know, you get what I'm saying? Like that's even more insane. So I was just trying to get to know God. And throughout this, I ended up meeting my wife. And I had all the things that money couldn't buy. I had faith. I had health. I had my relationship with my wife. Yet I had this thing lacking, which was, what is the thing I'm meant to do? What's my mission? And how am I going to provide for my family? And up to this point, I didn't care because I was just a kid that was willing to sleep on the floor and go serve people in trash dumps. And I was like, I got to build a family. What am I called to do? What is my responsibilities given to me by God? And so I went out there and, and failed in business for about three and a half years, got the right mentors, got the right coaches, got in the right environments, started operating in faith again instead of fear. Many times I operated in fear again instead of faith, which is already a, uh, you're already losing the game that you're trying to win at. You're, you're already losing. If you're operating in faith, you're already lost. Like whether you get a good result or not, you're already losing. So I got to the point where finally we started building a business. My first business we started building well was a health and fitness weight loss online uh, business for men, scaled that company, launched the Brotherhood 2017, which is billion dollar Brotherhood, had our first six figure month, 14 months after I quit carpet cleaning, 
which I had to do just to get by making 20 K a year for two years. Pretty insane. Uh, built a flooring company on the back end of that as well. Uh, and then throughout those years, we've seen just insane stuff, bro. Like we've been featured in Forbes, spoken on stages of 5,000 plus people, held dozens of events that have produced multiple six figures in revenue at each event for our companies, sold millions over the phone and just had a, a blast doing it. Yet one thing that I realized was that I felt like God called me to talk to not church people. But it was actually time that he actually qualified me in this marketplace of business. When I first got in, I talked about Jesus. Nobody listened. And this is the difference between if you have a gifting, that's one thing. But if you have anointing on the gifting, that's where it really becomes powerful. God qualifies, right? Well, who God is qualified, no one can disqualify. I wasn't yet qualified or anointed in this area. I came into business and I was like, Jesus, my testimony, I tell people about the story I just told you guys. And no one, no one even cared. I'd be around these famous people and they were like, who the heck's this guy? No power, no authority, no anointing, nothing worked. Built this business, transformed men for the last seven years. I've been running Billion Dollar Brotherhood with, with men that are entrepreneurs, building these events, seeing them prosper in relationships, business, and health, but it was missing the core focus, which was Jesus. And God spoke to me as well as some of my friends and got confirmation. There was time if it worked for them, it would work for the Christian men. Like we, we literally built these companies and these lives that were modeled just on the principles mm. and never connected them to the source or the spirit. And of course we saw salvations and stuff, but it wasn't our core messaging. We weren't sharpening them in that area. And for us now, it's all about Jesus and Jesus in the center. Holy spirit is the covering and God is the multiplier of the success of the men in our, in the, in our community. And it's been wild how we had them successful on principle, bro. When they got connected to God, it was like, multiplication. And that's why we went to King's Brotherhood is it was time. The anointing was there. The covering was there. The It was time to, I was finally called to it. And bro, now I'm getting on shows. I'm doing a hundred shows right now. Just preaching this message. None of, not all of them. I get to talk about my demonic story. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't feel called to it. Right. This was just yeah. random. I haven't yeah. told this in out of like the last 15. I'm actually glad you did. Cause I Every, I everyone's listening, bro. Yeah. Everyone's listening. The influencer, the billionaire, they're all like, it's all clicking. And that's how I know I'm like, God, you qualify, not me. I was just a kid that was 60 pounds overweight that grew up in a broken home that my parents broke up when they were four. I grew up in a 1300 square foot house, middle class. I didn't, gra I barely graduated high school at the 1.8. I had to go to summer school to finish school every single year. I was so disqualified and he's using me now, like, like I, I'm building a show called God's business. I'm like, man, we're going to beat all the business podcasts, all the faith pot. Like, I don't, I'm just like, we're going to take over the, the church podcast. No, we're going to beat them talking to business owners, the business shows. I'm like, no, we're going to beat them. Like they, they don't have Jesus in it. And like this, that's the unfair advantage that every Christian has. And every spirit filled believer has as well. Well, first, dude, let me. You said a lot there that I need to dive into. So I, uh, I got my Otter AI over here taking notes, where I can kind of come back and be like, "What's all that Nicholas just said in the last ten minutes that I need to, I need to dive in?" So that's really helpful. But one thing I want to honor with you first, and I, I, I think this is so backwards that we have in culture today, is that so many, especially online kind of culture, and use the word influencers, is that so many people especially younger folks want to have influence before they've ever taken any responsibility. And I think of like a great example, of like Joshua, where Joshua very early on set outside of Moses' tent. He was given responsibility well before he had influence, right? Well before he was actually given the, the, the keys to the kingdom in a sense, right? To take over God's armies. And so for you, you talk about that, those seven years Right now, God's kind of moving you into into this next phase is like you took responsibility. You've had responsibility. Now God has given you influence. And I think you're a great example for a lot of folks listening is that like, I know we want to influence because we maybe you want to grow your brand or maybe you want to grow your business. But I also think it's, it's a really good question to ask yourself, like, have I had a season yet where I've just taken responsibility? Like I've been obedient to what God has called me to, right? Where I've showed myself to be someone that God can pour influence on. And I, I think, you know, I'd love to hear your feedback on this, but, you know, we often, man, just want to cut to the influence, right? Without ever, without ever asking like, well, when have I showed myself to be responsible? 
Yeah, you're called to multiply what's in your hand. End of story. Some people, the second they get saved, they maybe get put in the, the position of president of the United States or go viral and have 1.5 million followers. You may not. It's like Jesus had 12 disciples that walked with him everywhere, yet there was one demon-possessed guy that got delivered, and he didn't say, hey, come follow us, like learn how to be a Christian, learn how to follow me. He's like, go back into the town and tell everyone what I did for you. Like tell everyone what happened. It's like, wait, this guy wasn't even qualified. Why aren't the disciples going and do that? They waited till after the Holy Spirit came to really do anything. So it's like God decides and qualifies. And for us, we're called to just multiply what's in our hands. Like that, that's what we're called to do. So what, how can we steward the things that are in our hands? How can we show up and be present and give excellence to the season that we're in right now? Because oftentimes what happens is we have something that we want to get to. You look at Joseph. David's a great example, but Joseph is a phenomenal entrepreneur example and, and, and Israelite. So, so keep me on both of those. I'll try to go as fast through Joseph as possible. But Joseph has a vision, right? He's like, dream. Hey, I'm going to rule over all my brothers. This is great. No one likes that. Think about entrepreneurs. They, they get in, they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to be a real estate investor. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm going to be like financially free, financially independent, cash flow. I'm all about cash flow, blah, 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 blah. And all the people around them, they're not used to that. They're like, man, tall poppy syndrome. This is where you cut down the person that's getting bigger. You start thinking bigger, you get cut down. Well, he had a really big issue with this because all of his brothers decided they wanted to kill him. Like you have a vision and now, now, now you share it with them. That Think about how like immature that really was. No one really thinks about that, but that's exactly what I did. I was like, I'm, re I'm retired. I told people at 20, I was in network marketing. We were making more than enough money residually to live. I said, I'm retired. By the end of 20, that company had gone under and I lost all my income. Wow. All my friends were like, oh yeah, Mr. Retired Man, same thing. Not as bad as Joseph. Joseph got sold into slavery. But Joseph was faithful where he was at. Realized like no one, even his slave master, didn't have to worry about anything besides the food he ate. Because when Joseph was there, God was with him. But that is not how he expected it to go. I'm going to rule over all you guys. I saw a vision of it. Then he gets thrown into slavery. What happened to you? Maybe it was like, for me, I was like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. God's called me to this. I've been to 14 different countries. I've seen thousands of miracles. If I just pray, God will equip me. He's called me into this. Why would I fail? Three and a half years later, I had not produced a profit in business. I had failed in the company that I talked about earlier. I had to go to my father and ask him to clean carpets. I cleaned carpets full time and I made $19,000 the first year and $21,000 the next. Mm -hmm. Living in Southern California with a wife. I had a $25 a week eating out budget and a $75 grocery budget split between two people, $12.50, $37.50 split. How, 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 how did you, how did you live that way? That doesn't make sense. Banana, sweet potato and Trader Joe's baby. Let's go. And wow. it's like very, like, this is what I go at. Same thing. And then what happened to Joseph? He's doing a great job and the chick lies about him and he gets sent to jail. Oh, that's exactly what he saw coming. But what ends up happening? Finally becomes second command of Pharaoh, falls a vision of exactly what God said to do, which literally bought them up all the land, all the people and everything, gave resources to the people that they now owned that then had to pay them for all the fruits that they produced, going quickly through it, gets the end, Jacob dies. So the brothers are like, wow, we're all underneath. Our brother rules over us and our father's dead. He's definitely going to kill us. And he goes to them and says, no, you don't understand. You think that you sold me into slavery. This was God's vision the entire time. He was able to see in hindsight. So how long are we going to do that? How long are we going to sit there and not prosper where we're planted? Because we're saying, well, God told me I was going to have a good business. Like I have faith for that. No, if you have faith, it's unshakable. Sorry. Like faith is unshakable. Meaning that in a year from now, if it doesn't happen, you don't not believe in it. You don't just shake faith. Hope is unshakable as well. So all it's proving is that you never had faith or hope in the, in the whole time. Luckily, faith and hope is both a gift from God, just like your ability to produce wealth, right? We go to Deuteronomy 8.18, remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Why does it say that? It says it because one, when God gives you a gift, you can use it without him. Like if you learn how to you go, oh God, help me do real estate, like help me know the numbers, you get the gift. You, you, get the, you get the ideas, you, you listen to what Ellis has to say, you figure out how to do it. You could easily do it and not glorify God. So I says, remember the Lord, your God, because it's he that gives you the ability. Why would you have to remember if you could like, if you couldn't do it without him, but, but do you honor him in the things that, that he's given you and called you to do the, the Israelite side? Look at Joseph. That's the entrepreneur journey. That is how short or long. Don't know. 
I think that really comes down to obedience. You look at the Israelites, they were disobedient. I mean, they complained the whole freaking way across the wilderness. These dudes were literally complaining after they just got delivered. Oh man, this food's terrible. And <laughs> it's just wild to me. But think about this. How many people do this in real estate? Real estate is one of the top, one, it's a phenomenal industry. Second, a lot of people come from corporate and they go, how do I get financial freedom? I'm sure you get a lot of these people. They have maybe a 401k. They got some money to invest and they'll never get to live the life that they want if they don't figure out a way that they can take the money and multiply it. That's what they've been called to do. So they do that by getting educated in real estate. Think about the Israelites. They're literally in slavery, which maybe you would call this a W-2 job. Because biblically, there's literally people that were in debt, were in the military, or slaves were literally the only people that had jobs. But we'll leave that aside for a second. So let's just call it that. Your slavery is whatever has got the grips on you. Maybe it's your business. Maybe you hate your business and you're enslaved. You feel like you're enslaved by your business and you want freedom. Well, let's break down the biblical reason for all of that. One, the what's the reason or the original definition of work? The original definition of work is avida, which means to worship. So the original Hebrew word for work means it directly translates to worship. So that changes how you do everything throughout the day. If I were to look at this and I go, God, man, not just speak through me, but wow, this is a form of worship to you because I am working. I go snap trees in the backyard, working avida to worship. What's the reason to work? To produce wealth. But what's the reason to produce wealth? To, pr to create freedom. What's the reason to create freedom? Well, we go back to the Israelites. Why did they need to become freed from being slaves? God said, so that they can worship me. Our freedom is literally there. So we literally work to create wealth, to create freedom, so that we have the ability to worship God and serve through our skill sets. Like, you know, in real estate, it's like, man, that can be used for a million things. Our time, I just help my church clean up a bunch of broken trees because I'm like, man, I have freedom to give my time. And then also our money. Where are we giving our money to? I look at the Israelites. They literally get freed from the thing that was enslaved them. And because they didn't get to the promised land fast enough, they in this free fall where they hit rock bottom. And you know what they start doing? The same thing that a lot of people that probably come to you and they're the, they're the ones who think that this stuff doesn't work, blah, 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 blah. That they start desiring the old life they used to have. They literally were like, it was so much better when we were in slavery. Because when we were in slavery, at least we knew what we were going to eat. The food was hot. We knew our daily routine. How often do people do this? Man, that job I had really wasn't that bad. No, you have to remember why you left slavery to run to the promised land. They say it probably would have taken about two weeks if they just went straight and were obedient to go from slavery to the promised land. It takes 40 years. Why? Because they're whining and complaining, dreaming about the past, lost in the loop and never ascending to that next level. Mm. So I truly believe like, where can we, if, if you're going to commit to something, commit to it and see it through. Why did God have you leave this? Why did you leave this? Remember that so you don't go back in what I call eat the dog's throw up. Dog throws up, does a circle, comes back and eats the throw up. The thing that reject, was rejected from the body, let's just put it back in. People do that so often with the business that they're used to, the job that they used to be in, the thing that enslaved them, they get freedom. They start desiring it because things didn't go the way that they wanted them to. Yet, where do we get that source of freedom? You also see that from when they were disobedient. The snakes came out and bit the Israelites. Many died. Yet, what Moses goes and well, how do we, how do we deal with this? I'll put a bronze snake on a pole that later would represent Christ being hung, being being hung on the cross. And anyone who looks to the bronze snake will live, and anyone who doesn't will die, be healed, or die. It's like how do we create a business with that type of focus? where our focus is on him first and then all the other things. You look at this through Solomon. Everyone, Solomon, the wealthiest man in the world, let's figure out how he did it. Like, well, we can't forget that he never tried to be the wealthiest man in the world. Like that wasn't his original ambition. His original ambition was being humbled before God and asking him for the ability to carry out his mission on the earth, to serve the people he wanted him to serve and to be able to have the knowledge and wisdom to be able to judge it correctly. And because of that, he got everything else. So no wonder so many people are walking around without the ability to produce wealth because they have it in the wrong order the entire time. Reset our audience today. You say we have it in the wrong order. Like when folks come into your group, right, from a practical standpoint, like 
let's talk about just how do we repent of that? Like what, how do we begin to kind of realign, you know, as you talk about the four dimensional businessman, kind of get those dimensions in order so that we can kind of go to the next level to use your language. Yeah. Great question. So the first part is inside of identity as a Christ follower, you get to put on a new identity for us. It's that four dimensional businessman. We're helping these men step into that where they're going, okay, I'm not only going to submit my health, something I can't outsource as a man. I can't outsource my health, meaning I can get a plan, but no one's going to make sure that I don't eat Reese's cups and stuff them in the side of my bed in the middle of the night. And then when I go to change the sheets, all the wrappers fly up in the air. And I'm speaking from complete experience on this one. No one can keep me from doing that. So if I can't outsource that area, I probably should take responsibility and get good at it. I shared at Wellspring a quote, with great power comes great responsibility. No, when you take great responsibility, you get you gain great power. If you want to decrease stress and anxiety in your life, the number one first step is to take responsibility for the thing that's causing you the anxiety. Hmm. If it's the business, take responsibility for it. Like God's given that to you, right? Like he didn't, say, he didn't give people the, the minus of the talents and say like, oh my goodness, like, you know, sit here and freak out about and ask me about it every single day. It's like, no, like I've given you the ability to go out there and multiply this. So go out there and do it. Don't be afraid. What's the one person inside the parable of the talents that didn't multiply, but just held on to it? Why did they do that? It says, because he was afraid. How often do you have this happen inside of real estate? Oh man, this deal. I don't know if I could do that. It's like, well, but that's the exact spirit that that guy had. He was so afraid to lose that he just held on and clinged on. So I didn't invest in education. So first is inside of identity, resetting it, that health, that health sphere, submitting it to him. He wants your health. He, he knows that you can't outsource it. So you should become good at it. You should take responsibility for it. Relationship. We're talking about with your spouse, with your family, people that are like family, friends, network, community. He wants that. How do we take responsibility for that? Instead of our business, our mission and vision, you have a vision for the future that God's placed on your heart. You have the ability to produce wealth, the ability to steward wealth, and the ability to multiply wealth. So we want to have these categories. If we can't outsource it, right? Like there has to be some type of like decision-making process of the vision and what you're looking to create that God's put in your heart. We should take responsibility for it and we should become very good at it. Yet he doesn't want just the things. He wants you as well. Hmm. Like it, it's not just about, about, oh God, take my health. Cause I know you'll multiply it. Take my business, take my finances. I know that if I submit it to you, you're going to multiply it for me. No, like he wants you to submit to him. And this is why I say like, it's really health plus wealth plus covenant community. These deep like-minded relationships times God equals a four-dimensional businessman. But a three-dimensional businessman, which is what most people are out there, all your competition, all the people you go after, it's health plus wealth plus relationships times me. So everyone else is just, they're the only multiplier of their success. And, and all I know is that God's multiplication is 30, 60, and 100 fold. Man's multiplication is, is in single digits. And so the first step is to take that identity of, I'm going to be this four-dimensional businessman. These core areas, I'm going to take responsibility for, yet I'm going to submit them all to God. I'm going to say, God, I'm going to submit myself to you, and I'm going to put you above all these things, just like the snake on the pole. How often do we get into worship, we start praying, we start reading our Bible, and all we're thinking about is all the different problems, the businesses, the things that we want, all the problems that need to be solved. Well, that's a great representation of all the snakes. If you kill, oh, kill that snake, kill that snake, this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. Oh, I'm unhealthy. I'm this, I'm that. God, bless my business, bless my health, bless this, bless that. And there's a place for that. There's declaration for that. There's power and authority for those moments. Yeah, one thing he says above all things is seek first the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be added unto you. He says, keep your eyes in all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll make your path straight and you'll crown your efforts with success. So how do we, in everything that we do, acknowledge him, keep our eyes on him so that when we do that, everything not only gets healed, but everything gets blessed by him. Hmm. And that's, that's the first step. And so what I, well, what I love about that is like you're not, you're not, you're saying part of really doing this is taking responsibility. So there, there's an, there's an ownership of maybe yeah. where you're at, but there's an acknowledgement of like, you know, I mean, look, you know, I think that's a great story of, you know, comparing it to the Israelites in the wilderness, right? Where there, there are issues around them. 
that maybe they are the reason the snakes are there, right? Like they're the reason that God put the snakes there. But oh, now yeah. the solution is, hey, I really have to give, I have to look to God to, for healing. I have to look to God for multiplication. Yeah. And there's always going to be things that uh, God can do anything, right? Anything and everything God can do. There's some things that you cannot do that only God can do. There's other things that God can do, but he won't do. He'll only do them through you. So it's deciphering, like, how do I co-labor with God? How do I actually build this life where I can co-labor? And that's why with King's Brotherhood, the way that we're doing it is going, how do we get the upper room experience? Men together in one accord. So one, it's already men, right? So there's like-mindedness of there's different personality types, but then there's different genders, right? Man, God took woman out of man and took femininity out of him which is not very popular. There's masculinity in the man. Femininity was taken out of him and only together in marriage can masculine and feminine come together. But people say, oh, men need to tap into their feminine side. Mm -hmm. No, they can act feminine, but men don't have a feminine side. Femininity was taken out of man when Eve was taken out of man. Mm -hmm. And it's inside of that perfect relationship through marriage that we got both of that. Yet inside the environment, men don't have a place to be able to get around men anymore. Like we don't go out and have to do something physical. A woman could be on this podcast and slay it way better than I can. Our work of today is things that can be done intellectually, whereas physical before, if we had to go defend a nation, no matter if the woman was better at fighting, we were not going to send a woman to go do it. You and I, some men out there, they would. But if someone breaks into my house, even my wife's a black belt jujitsu and I'm a nobody, I'm going to go first and die defending my wife before I send her down. Simple as that. And we don't have that ability to connect that way anymore. So because of that, we got to get masculinity together and ask God, what does masculinity actually look like? How do I show up truly masculine? How do I get filled? Also, the second thing, as men, you're together one with your wife, one spirit, right? When I just smacked my mic even. One <laughs> spirit, that's how powerful it is. If you heard that, boom, you become one spirit. When you take ground, it's the original definition of rising tides raises all ships. If you go take ground as a man and authority in your life, it automatically gives ground and authority to your wife's life. But people think, oh, my wife has to be in the room. If she doesn't, then we're going to be growing separately. <laughs> no, no, no. When she grows, you grow. When you grow, she grows. There's a time for both. Time to come together and grow. Time for her to grow. Time for you to grow. So getting them outside of their environment so they get around these men. Business. So now we're in these accords. Men, faith, Jesus, business, one accord coming together in this one accord saying, God, we're here. We're here as men. We're here as businessmen looking to carry out your mission on the earth. Because how often do we see this man inside the business world? And you know this from your business. Inside the business world, most of it is just, just regular people. There's no spiritual aspect. There's no real faith in Jesus. If there is, it's a, it's a mention. It's not a sharpening. Right. And you go to church though, where there's a sharpening of Jesus, a brotherhood, there's men's events, et cetera. Yet what happens? None of them know how to run a business and none of them connect to you that way. So you're like, oh yeah, I'm spending a million dollars this month on this. Or, what? Like I'm, I'm, I won't even go out and eat Chick-fil-A with you to be able to have lunch together because that just seems like a bad stewardship of money. And you're going to go out there and blow $1 million on XYZ event or these things or this investment. It's like, oh my goodness, we have to get around business people. But if we want to truly grow, we want to get around men of faith. But how can we have no compromise where you can have Jesus and Holy Spirit and business and come together and come together in one accord where Jesus can show up in a completely different way? And this is what we're seeing, man. It is so wild. We're getting guys from different denominations. Some of them had never prayed in 10 years and they, they see our community. They rededicate their life to Christ. They say, I want you to be the multiplier of my success, not me anymore. Mm -hmm. I have other guys that are missionaries that traveled with miracles, et cetera, still speak and they're running a business. We come together, all different backgrounds, Presbyterian to freaking Pentecostal. And we're seeing God move in a brand new way that isn't based on culture of the church, right? If everyone's shaken, fallen on the floor, the culture, that's the culture of the church. And that's amazing. I love that. If we're just reading the word and we don't even, you know, if you pray with your eyes open, you're not even praying. If we're in that church, there's that. And there's benefits to that. Like knowing the word is beneficial. We are called to know the word. It's there for a reason. Yet when we get these guys together and we're like, we're men in business, submitting to Jesus, saying, God, encounter us here. What's this new thing you want to speak to us? We're coming together in one accord, putting all of our acknowledgement on you. 
as men in business, all in the same intentionality. And that's the original mastermind. You run a mastermind. I run a brotherhood, technically a mastermind. Where did it come from? Came from the upper room, came from Jesus and the disciples. The upper room, people coming together in a spirit of harmony and one accord. That's thinking grow rich. <laughs> it's just the same. They're trying to reproduce something that is more powerful with the spirit of God. I think that's so powerful, man. And just to go over your, your four dimensions, health, wealth, relationships, faith. Multiplied by God. Yep. And, and that really is success for you where you say, if, we, if we're really going to those, we want to go, go, go deeper in health, wealth, our relationships, and then the multiplier is God. That really is what success looks like in all these areas. And I think that's really powerful, dude. Like, I, I do think there is a real movement. And, and I have found, and, I mean, it's how you and I met, right, of being intentional about the rooms that we show up in. And dude, I can just say, man, like, there, like every one of those arenas in my life are going deeper right now, health what we're doing like i'm wearing my whoop band right now i got my my vitamins showing up next week like where i'm going in my health this year is something i never could imagine my wealth bro i spent two days in a room full of christians and i'm like we're, we're gonna forex our company this year right like my relationships my relationship yep. with my wife my relationship with my kids are so deep why because like we showed up in a room where god was being worshipped where god was first and yep. All those arenas are going to the next level, man. I love so I love what you're saying. Like, there's permission. I think if someone's listening today, like, what's the takeaway for me or maybe for you is like, there's permission to go to absurd levels in all of these arenas <laughs> because, like, God desires to multiply those arenas in your life, right? Like, uh, we're we're blessed to be a blessing. I mean, you talked about Israel's ultimate purpose was to worship God, but they were also called to be a city on the hill. Like, God wanted to bless them. And you yep. think about where Israel's located. Look at where it is. It's in the midst of these, you know, I mean, think about why there's so many issues in the Middle East right now because they all just are like on top of one another. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can't throw a rock without hitting somebody or offending someone. And so it, like you look about like why God even chose them and to bring them into this area is because, man, what would it look like for a country to be so blessed, to be so under the authority of God and what that would do to draw in the nations around them? And so imagine that, right, where God is blessing us as men, as women, uh, and, and people look at our lives and say, wow, well, why? Because God, because I'm a follower of Christ, because God is blessing my life and he wants to draw you into that. And so anyways, man, I appreciate that reminder because I think it's really good for anyone listening is like yeah, what, and what the rooms you're showing up in. A million percent. And, and those are the things that we can easily control. Like everyone is called to show up in powerful rooms. Everyone is called to get around great community. Everyone is called to have wise counselors. So like, if you don't know anything else to do right now, be obedient to what the word says and go to someone like else. Success leaves clues. Like, all right, well, I got around really good community, gotten really great masterminds. Like, I'll tell you what, what costs more? Ignorance or education? I always ask people this. What do you think costs more? And everyone's like, oh, ignorance costs more. I'm like, okay. Well, then why are we not right. investing in masterminds, yeah. investing Education, in coaches, development, investing in, in wise counselors? And, and when you look at it, it comes then from their obedience. Saul, God turned his face from Saul to David, which no one knew at the time, because Saul decided to take what the God said and be disobedient. And the second that he did that, there was two really big scriptures that just absolutely, this is what spoke to me when I transferred to King's Brotherhood, because it was not easy to do. I literally canceled everyone in our company's contract and said, this is where we're going. If you want to go this way, you can re-up with us. Not an easy thing to do. And it was like, what ended up happening is that it was said that, uh, that obedience is greater than sacrifice, it's number one, and disobedience is like the sin of witchcraft. And I realized that I could go my whole life being like Abraham. If Abraham would have just, God said, hey, sacrifice Isaac. He could have been like, that's the last straw. I'm going to go do my own thing. And he would have never entered into this immediate blessing of God. But he was instantaneously obedient because he knew who God was. And he went up there with Isaac. And right before God provided and instantly right after, everything came. But everyone wants the everything that came. I want, I want all that. Yeah. What did he do? It's like, well, he was obedient and willing to sacrifice everything. So I did that with my company, did it with myself, did it with my family, everything. But my company was the one I just, I couldn't, it was so hard. thought I was doing the wrong thing. What if I'm wrong? 
Like, God, I'm willing to sacrifice it all to you to be obedient. The second that I did that, I got more done in the next month than I probably would have gotten done in a year. Mm. And like every bit of creativity and vision was like right after that. But same thing with Abraham was willing to be obedient and instantly walked in the blessing, but could have wandered just like an Israelite for 40 years, wondering why, why did God do that? Why, why did he, you know, he'd been thinking about it forever. So how are we going to react to that? Like, especially because we have the Holy Spirit. It's like, man, come on. It's time to it's time to walk in power, man. First Corinthians 420 for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. God wants to manifest his living power through you. He wants you to run a business differently than everyone else. Yet can we go out there and just be obedient yeah. to what he's saying to you with great counselors, great people around you, great masterminds? Those are the things you can 100 percent control. It's like drinking water. God can heal you. But man, if you can't just pick up the water and figure out how to drink a gallon a day half gallon a day, bro, ain't no one going to be able to help you. If you can't do the simple things, if you can't be trusted with little, you can't be trusted with much. Hmm. Guys, if you are enjoying this as much as I am, I want to encourage you, man, go check out what all the content that Nicholas is doing at the the King's Brotherhood, uh, thekingsbrotherhood.com. Uh, he also wrote a book called The Modern Day Businessman. You can actually get that for free on his website. And, uh, and even you even got a free Facebook group for, uh, for your community. So if you're a man listening to this show and you, uh, want to go deeper in this, then I encourage you, we'll, we'll make sure, well, you can find all this at the kingsbrotherhood.com. So we'll link that in the show notes below. But, uh, dude, what, before we get out of here today, man, where, where else would you point folks or is there a give that you want to provide to just kind of help people to take that next level in? Yeah. So my name, Nicholas Barely at Nicholas Barely on Instagram which you technically type in Instagram.com slash Nicholas Barely. Anyone who sends me a message there, I would love, I actually put like 300K into writing this phenomenal book where I interviewed like some of the top people in the world and really shared some of my stories, some of my faith ones, like how I got lost in the middle of the ocean or how I flew over to Africa on a whim with no shots and somehow got in to do ministry all the way to the business success side and what we talk about with the dimensions. Uh, I actually have, physical copies in my garage that for every show I put aside a few that people that DM me on Instagram, I will literally sign them, pay for the shipping, pay for the book, no free plus shipping funnel though. I'm all into those things. I kind of, I sling things on the internet, bro. I know how to sell stuff on the internet though. This is like my give is that all I need is your address. I don't even need you to opt into nothing. Would love to just send out a physical copy for free. Mm, I love that. So to DM you on Instagram at Nicholas barely. Correct. Guys, go take a man up on his word. Um, this is a guy you want in your corner. I'm glad to have you in mind, dude. I'm uh, really looking forward to getting to spend some more time with you this year and uh, and and seeing guy really multiply all that he's doing in our in our marriages and our health and our wealth uh, and our businesses, man. So grateful for you to come serve our, our our audience today. Thanks, man. Guys, hey, make sure you screenshot this episode. Go put this on Instagram. Go put this on Facebook. Wherever you do social media, let us know. Tag us at Ellis Hammond underscore at Nicholas Barely. Let us know how you enjoyed this show. You know, what stuck out to you? Uh, go take action on this. Go DM him. Go join his Facebook group. Go do something to put yourself in an area. Go put yourself in an, in, in an environment that's going to level you up somewhere after this show today. Uh, don't just listen to the show and, and do nothing. So I want to encourage you. If you want to go learn about Nicholas's community, go do that. If you're not a part of Kingdom REI yet, come do that. But go do something. Take an action today. It's going to take you to the next level. Uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Leave us a five-star review. If you did, and we'll see you next week. Cheers, everybody.